أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين أنك حميد مجيد بيض بركة سيد الشيخ سيد محمد فوزي الكركر قدس الله سره Notes from Zakara of September 4th, 2023 Before starting this video, I would like to state that this work would never have seen the light without CD Shaykh. If something is wrong, it will be from myself, and everything that is correct is from CD Shaykh. CD Shaykh spoke about the ascension to the second heaven in the lecture of the Lamb of Contraction, Lamb of Qabr, also called the Lamb of Patient, Lamb al Ashq. CD Shaykh said that at the beginning of his wayfaring, the disciple has learned the hair of identity. With its seven lectures. The disciple then puts this knowledge into practice here on the earth, applying it in his interaction with the Shaykh, the disciples, his work, etc. Through this practice, he realizes that the life that he is living is nothing more than messages from the Shaykh. In Surah Al Kahf, Sayyidina Al Khidr said to Sayyidina Musa, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Hatta uhdita laka minhu dhikran. Till I make mention of it to thee. The word uhdithu is derived from hadath, which does translate to evad. This means that al-Khidr alayhi salam prevented Musa alayhi salam that he would create evads for him to learn from and understand. The Shaykh guides the disciple not only at the zawiya, but also at work with family and everywhere else. Wherever the disciple is, the Shaykh sets up a verse to send him message. Since the bay'ah, the disciple is on a spiritual journey with his Shaykh. The disciple experiences this in his life and discusses it, saying, Subhanallah, my wife has charged it, the children have charged it. Even in his job, he feels this charge. He wishes both the blessings, and ni'am, and the curses, and niqam. In reality, these are tests and lessons for the disciple to understand how to be a devoted servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sidi Shaykh then spoke about the second lecture of the Supreme Name. He mentioned that at this point, the Tariqah had progressed to the second lecture. Following the half identity which represents the first lecture, another circle would be created for the disciple in this lecture. This circle would be confronted by another upper circle that represents the second heaven. In this lecture, the disciple will learn how to penetrate from one heaven to another, just like he learned in the first lecture how to penetrate from the earth to the heaven. He will also learn how to penetrate from one earth to another. Sidi Sheikh explained that when the disciple ascends to the first heaven, he isn't able to see nothing except the first earth, which is the mosque of the Prophet ﷺ. In reference to the hadith, the earth has been made for me a mosque. It's as if the disciple is on the roof of the mosque of the Prophet ﷺ, observing what happens in it. Now, in the second lecture, it's being affirmed that there is a higher level, a higher roof. If the disciple goes from the first to the second heaven, he will see the second earth and describe it. The Shaykh doesn't describe what's there. It's the disciple's job to tell what he saw. Sidi Shaykh said that during the disciple's spiritual journey, he should focus on the center of the circles as the star in the center can take him up to the Muntaha. As for the other stars, on the right and left, will get him lost and won't lead him anywhere. That's why people who engage in dhikr on their own without allegiance, without bay'ah, often don't attain significant progress. At the very best, they might observe without achieving anything. Sidi Sheikh said later that the disciple knows the first earth very well. He knows that the first thing Allah created on this earth was a dot made of water, which turned into a solid rock. The Kaaba was built on this rock. So when he ascends to the second heaven and sees the first earth, he don't care about it, as he knows it very well. He will see under the circle of the first earth another circle, which is the second earth. He will discover then what exists in the second earth. 
See the Sheikh Ajad, the disciple, while he is in the first heaven with the spirit, he can see himself or his body doing dhikr on the earth. Once he reaches the second heaven, he can see multiple versions of himself. There is one in the first heaven, another on the earth engaging in dhikr, and yet another copy in the second earth. He will discover then the reality of the second earth, its dimensions, what does it contain, etc. To summarize this part, Sidi Sheikh explained that the first earth is like a circle, and beneath it, there is a larger circle representing the second earth. Above them, there is a circle symbolizing the first heaven, with the same size as the first earth. Then, above that, there is an even larger circle, which signifies the second heaven, and matches the dimensions of the second earth. At this point, no one claimed to have reached the third heaven. There are only two heavens and two earths in this stage. Sidi Sheikh also said that in the spiritual seclusion, Khulwa, the Sheikh gathered seven heavens within the heart of the disciple. Otherwise, the Sheikh would not allow the disciple to leave the Khulwa. The purpose of gathering the heavens within the disciple's heart during Khulwa is that when the Sheikh wants to talk or teach about one of those heavens or circles, the disciple can understand him easily. Then it's up to the disciple. If he puts in serious effort, he will understand what the Sheikh is talking about. Otherwise, the heavens will stay gathered within his heart. Sidi Sheikh says that when the disciple penetrates from the first to the second heaven, he is drawn nearer to the Lamb. At this stage, the disciple has the option to look in two directions. The first direction is when he faces the Lamb and put the second earth in his back. And the second is when he faces the second earth and put the lamp in his back. This can be stated in Surah Al-An'am, where Sayyidina Ibrahim said, when it said, he said, I love not things that said. In this context, it's important to understand that the star didn't actually set. Instead, it was Sayyidina Ibrahim, alayhi salam, who turned away from the star and directed his attention towards the second earth. Another example given by Sidi Shaykh to explain this concept is the ascension and Ma'raj of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam saw both paradise and hell during his ascension, Ma'raj. When he saw paradise, he was in fact facing towards the heavens. However, when he saw hell, he turned away from the lamp and faced towards the earth. Sidi Shaykh explained that the disciple lived this experience of penetrating the heavens while he is engaging in dhikr, he ascends with his spirit while his body is in the same place. In fact, the disciple ascends within himself, not in an external place. It all happens within him, and when he knows himself, he will know his Lord. As the folks of Allah, Ahlullah say, whoever knows himself, knows his Lord. Sidi Sheikh later discussed another concept. He mentioned that all the horrors, al hawl present in the second, third, up to the seventh earth, also exist in the first earth, but in much smaller quantities. And it's the same for the paradises. Everything that exists in the paradises has a small copy on the earth. For example, the Prophet ﷺ says, the area between my house and my member is one of the gardens of paradise. Also, he said that the Nile River is a river from paradise. So that was all for this video. Alhamdulillah, الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا هدانا الله. لقد جاءت رسول ربنا بالحق. اللهم لك الحمد. اللهم لك الحمد. اللهم لك الحمد. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين.